My name is Sevi Baines, and I'm joining you today from the Surrey Art Gallery. As one of the gallery's assistant curators, I feel fortunate to be in this particular role, to be able to engage and work with Surrey's diverse communities and to support local artists. I want to start off by acknowledging that the gallery is located in Bear Creek Park, where the salmon run, and I'm on the shared, unceded Coast Salish territory of the Kwantlen, Katsi, and Sami Amu nations who have been stewards of this land. This fall, we are pleased to be sharing Sandeep Johal's works in our solo exhibition called What If? And as you can see, Sandeep's works are right behind me. This exhibit presents inspirational stories of South Asian women while honoring the challenges they have faced in their struggles of self-definition. Johal's examination of her personal history as a first-generation South Asian youth is woven into the passage of time through drawings, paintings, and textiles. What If asks us to consider how our formative experiences and cultural narratives impact our own identity. Johal reclaims her heritage and voice as she celebrates women who themselves have reclaimed power through triumph and struggle. Through these shared experiences, this exhibition pays homage to women whose lives were taken in senseless acts of violence. With these important stories being shared in this space, we want to highlight a few other local South Asian women. We filmed a lovely conversation with exhibiting artist Sandeep Johal, co-owner of Vidge's restaurant Mio Dalwala, and chef manager Amarji Gill during the summer. We got to enjoy a delicious cup of jaw made by Amarjeet, and we learned what ingredients make up this delightful cup of homemade goodness, rich in history and layered with personal stories. So, I hope you enjoy this timely and important conversation with your own cup of cha. ਮੇਰਾ ਨਾਮ ਅਰਜੀਤ ਗੈਲਿਆ ਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਅੱਜ ਚਾਹ ਬਣਾਉਂਗੀ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਸਟਾਈਲ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਮੈਂ ਵਿਜਿਸ ਰੈਸਟੋਰੈਂਟ ਦੇ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦੀ ਆ ਮੈਂ ਇੱਥੇ ਜਨਰਲ ਮੈਨੇਜਰ ਆ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਵੇਰੇ ਆ ਕੇ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਆਪਣਾ ਕੰਮ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਕਰਕੇ ਫਿਰ ਅਸੀਂ ਚਾਹ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਸਟਾਈਲ ਚਾਹ ਪੀਦੀ ਆ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਰੈਗੂਲਰ ਚਾਹ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਉਹ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹ ਅਸੀਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਪਾਣੀ ਪਾਣੀ ਉਬਾਲਦੇ ਆ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਛੋਟੀ ਲੈਚੀ ਛੋਟੀ ਲੈਚੀ ਪਾਉਂਦੇ ਆ ਤਾਂ ਸੌਫਟ ਪਾਉਂਦੇ ਆ ਗੁੜ ਤੇ ਚਾਹ ਪੱਤੀ ਇਹ ਦੋ ਕੱਪ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਦੋ ਚਾਹ ਪੱਤੀ ਪਾਉਣੇ ਆ ਤੇ ਜਦੋਂ ਇਹ ਉੱਬਲ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਆ ਫਿਰ ਅਸੀਂ ਦੋ ਕੱਪ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਦੋ ਕੱਪ ਪਾਣੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਦੋ ਕੱਪ ਦੁੱਧ ਦੇ ਪਾਉਣੇ ਆ ਸਾਡਾ ਡਬਲ ਦੁੱਧ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਆ ਤੇ ਚਾਹ ਸਾਡੀ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਲਾਟੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਇਦਾਂ ਦੀ ਸਵਾਦ ਚਾਹ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਆ ਤੇ ਸੈਕਿੰਡ ਅਸੀਂ ਜੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਜੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੂੰ ਠੰਡ ਲੱਗੀ ਹੋਵੇ ਜ਼ੁਕਾਮ ਹੋਵੇ ਫਿਰ ਅਸੀਂ ਅਦਰਕ ਪਾਣੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਦਰਕ ਕੱਟ ਕੇ ਪਾਉਣੇ ਆ ਲੌਂਗ ਪਾਉਣੇ ਆ ਤਾਂ ਵੱਡੀ ਲੈਚੀ ਪਾਉਣੇ ਆ ਤੇ ਚਾਹ ਪੱਤੀ ਤਾਂ ਗੁੜ ਸਮ ਟਾਈਮ ਪੀਪਲ ਲਾਈਕ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰਦੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਸ਼ੂਗਰ ਵੀ ਪਾਈਦੀ ਆ ਤੇ ਦੈਨ ਅਸੀਂ ਦੁੱਧ ਪਾਈਦਾ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਪਾਣੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਦੁੱਧ ਪਾਈਦਾ ਮੇਰੀ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਮੇਰਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਸਾਥ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਕਿ ਜਦੋਂ ਮੈਂ ਬਾਹਰ ਵੀ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਸੀ ਆਪਣੇ ਕੰਮ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਕੁਕਿੰਗ ਸ਼ੋਅ ਤੇ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਡੀਟਰਾਈਟ ਜਾਣਾ ਜਾਂ ਨਿਊਯਾਰਕ ਮੈਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਸ਼ੋਅ ਕੀਤੇ ਆ ਫਿਰ ਮੇਰਾ ਕੋਈ ਮਾਈਂਡ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰਦਾ ਸੀ ਤੂੰ ਇਕੱਲੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਜਾ ਸਕਦੀ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਸਪੋਰਟ ਬਹੁਤ ਮਿਲੀ ਆ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਤੋਂ ਤੇ ਜਿਆਦਾ ਸਪੋਰਟ ਮੇਰੀ ਸਿਸਟਰ ਨੇ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਕੀਤੀ ਆ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਉਹਦੇ ਕੋਲੇ ਰਹੀ ਸੀ ਤਾਂ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਫਿਰ ਮੇਰਾ ਵਿਆਹ ਹੋਇਆ ਮੇਰੀ ਸ਼ਾਦੀ 1994 ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਾਬਾ ਸਿੰਘ ਖਿਆਲੀ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਹੋਈ ਸੀਗੀ ਸਾਡੀ ਲਵ ਮੈਰਿਜ ਸੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰੇ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮਿਲੇ ਸੀ ਤਾਂ ਉਹ ਨੇ ਵੀ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਪੋਰਟ ਕੀਤੀ ਆ ਹੁਣ ਤੱਕ ਅਸੀਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਇੱਕ ਦੂਜੇ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਸਾਡਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਪਿਆਰ ਆ ਤੇ ਮੇਰੇ ਦੋ ਬੱਚੇ ਆ ਇੱਕ ਮੇਰਾ ਬੇਟਾ ਇੱਕ ਮੇਰੀ ਬੇਟੀ ਆ ਮੈਂ 1994 ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੰਮ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀ ਬਿਕਰਮ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਉਦੋਂ ਮੀਰੂ ਦਾ ਹਰੇ ਵਿਆਹ ਹੋਇਆ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਫਿਰ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਮੀਰੂ ਦਾ ਵਿਆਹ ਹੋਇਆ ਤਾਂ ਫਿਰ ਰੈਸਟੋਰੈਂਟ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਜਦੋਂ ਚੱਲ ਬਹੁਤਾ ਬਿਜ਼ੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਸਲੋ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਸਟਾਰਟਿੰਗ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ
ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਆ ਮੇਰੀ ਮੈਂ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਕੰਮ ਹੋਰ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਵਿਕਰਮ ਕਹਿੰਦਾ ਤੂੰ ਵੇਟ ਕਰ ਤੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਅੱਧਾ ਮਹੀਨਾ ਵੇਟ ਕਰ ਲੈ ਤੇ ਸਾਰਾ ਕੁਝ ਠੀਕ ਹੋ ਜਾਣਾ ਫਿਰ ਆਫਟਰ 2 ਮੰਥ ਰੈਸਟੋਰੈਂਟ ਇੰਨਾ ਬਿਜ਼ੀ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਲਾਈਨ ਅਪ ਹੋ ਗਈ ਫਿਰ ਮੈਂ ਵਿਕਰਮ ਵਿਕਰਮ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਮੈਂ ਪੰਜ ਦਿਨ ਹੀ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਨਾ ਮੇਰੇ ਕੋਲ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਤੇ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਮੈਂ ਫਿਰ ਪੰਜ ਦਿਨ ਕੰਮ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਰੈਸਟੋਰੈਂਟ ਇੰਨਾ ਜਿਆਦਾ ਬਿਜ਼ੀ ਹੋਇਆ ਮੈਂ ਡੈਸ਼ਵਾਸ਼ਰ ਤੋਂ ਕੰਮ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀ ਡੈਸ਼ਵਾਸ਼ਰ ਤੋਂ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਕਰਕੇ ਫਿਰ ਮੈਂ ਕੁਕਿੰਗ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਈ ਫਿਰ ਮੀਰੂ ਨੇ ਮੇਰੀ ਹੈਲਪ ਕੀਤੀ ਮੀਰੂ ਦੀਆਂ ਰੈਸਪੀਆਂ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਸੀ ਫਿਰ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਕੱਠਿਆਂ ਨੇ ਬਣਾਈਆਂ ਹੁਣ ਤੱਕ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਰੈਸਪੀ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਹੁਣ ਮੈਂ ਸਾਰੀ ਰੈਸਟੋਰੈਂਟ ਨੂੰ ਸੰਭਾਲਦੀ ਆ ਮੈਂ ਜਨਰਲ ਮੈਨੇਜਰ ਆ ਤੇ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਸਾਰਾ ਮੈਂ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਮੇਰੀਆਂ ਲੇਡੀਜ਼ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦੀਆਂ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਇੱਕ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਦੇ ਵਾਂਗੂ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਤੇ ਵਿਕਰਮ ਤੇ ਮੀਰੂ ਨਾਲ ਵੀ ਸਾਡਾ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਵਾਂਗੂ ਹੀ ਇੱਕ ਰਿਸ਼ਤਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਜਦ ਮੈਂ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਈ ਸੀ ਤਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਟੀਵੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੁਕਿੰਗ ਸ਼ੋਅ ਦੇਖਦੀ ਸੀ ਤਾਂ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਬਹੁਤ ਚੰਗੇ ਲੱਗਦੇ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਮੇਰੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਇੱਕਦਮ ਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਵੀ ਕੁਝ ਬਣਨਾ ਬਣ ਸਕਦੀ ਆ ਦੇਖ ਕੇ ਵੀ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਮੈਂ ਆਪਣਾ ਫੈਸ਼ਨ ਹੀ ਬਣਾ ਲਿਆ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਮੈਂ ਕੁਕਿੰਗ ਹੀ ਸਿੱਖਣੀ ਆ ਫਿਰ ਕੁਦਰਤੀ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਜੌਬ ਮਿਲ ਗਈ ਕੁਕਿੰਗ ਦੀ ਫਿਰ ਮੈਂ ਤੇ ਮੀਰੂ ਨੇ ਰੈਸਪੀਆਂ ਕਰਦੀਆਂ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਸੀ ਫਿਰ ਅਸੀਂ ਅੱਗੇ ਦੀ ਅੱਗੇ ਕਰੀ ਗਈਆਂ ਐਵਰੀ 3 ਮੰਥ ਅਸੀਂ ਰੈਸਪੀਆਂ ਚੇਂਜ ਕਰਦੇ ਸੀ ਤਾਂ ਮੀਰੂ ਕੋਲੋਂ ਮੈਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਲਰਨ ਕੀਤਾ ਬਿਕਰਮ ਤੋਂ ਮੈਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਲਰਨ ਕੀਤਾ ਤਾਂ ਰੈਸਟੋਰੈਂਟ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੁਣ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਇੱਥੇ ਹੋ ਗਏ ਆ 27 ਜੀਅਰ ਹੋ ਗਏ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦੀ ਨੂੰ ਪਰ ਮੇਰੇ ਇੱਕ ਬੇਟਾ ਤੇ ਬੇਟੀ ਆ ਹੈਰੀ ਤੇ ਅਵਨੀਤ ਤਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਵੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਮਿਹਨਤ ਕੀਤੀ ਆ ਪਰ ਮੈਂ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮੇਰੇ ਬੈਕ ਹੋਮ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਪੂਅਰ ਪੀਪਲ ਆ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕੁੜੀਆਂ ਦੇ ਵਿਆਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਮੈਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੈਲਪ ਕੀਤੀ ਆ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਮੇਰਾ ਇੱਕ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਆ ਉੱਥੇ ਵੀ ਬਾਕੀ ਮੈਂ ਆਪਣੀ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਦੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੈਲਪ ਕੀਤੀ ਆ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਇੱਥੇ ਮੈਂ ਇੱਥੇ ਵੀ ਮੰਗਵਾਇਆ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਬੈਕ ਹੋਮ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ ਮੈਂ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦੀ ਹੈਲਪ ਕਰਦੀ ਆ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਉੱਥੇ ਉੱਥੇ ਇੰਨਾ ਕੁਝ ਹੈ ਨਹੀਂ ਉੱਥੇ ਖੇਤੀ ਆ ਖੇਤੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੁਝ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਖੇਤੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜੋ ਵੀ ਜੋ ਵੀ ਫਸਲ ਨਿਕਲਦੀ ਆ ਉਹਦਾ ਕੁਝ ਨਹੀਂ ਬਣਦਾ ਐਂਡ ਤੇ ਕੁਝ ਨਹੀਂ ਨਿਕਲਦਾ ਤੇ ਫਿਰ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਬੈਕ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਦੀ ਹੈਲਪ ਕਰਨੀ ਪੈਂਦੀ ਆ ਤੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਮਪਲੋਈ ਇੱਥੇ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਕੁੜੀਆਂ ਰੱਖੀਆਂ ਹੋਈਆਂ ਉਹ ਕੋਈ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਦੇ ਐਡ ਪਾਈ ਨਹੀਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਇੱਕ ਦੂਜੇ ਨੂੰ ਜਾਣਦੇ ਹੁੰਨੇ ਆ ਅੱਗੇ ਦੀ ਅੱਗੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਆਉਨੇ ਆ ਤੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਐਕਸਪੀਰੀਅੰਸ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਕੋਲ ਐਕਸਪੀਰੀਅੰਸ ਹੋਵੇ ਸਾਡਾ ਆਪਣਾ ਹੀ ਹੈਗਾ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੀਆਂ ਰੈਸਪੀਆਂ ਆਪਣੀਆਂ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਪ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਆਪ ਸਿਖਾਉਨੇ ਆ ਤੇ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੂੰ 20 ਸਾਲ ਹੋ ਗਏ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੂੰ 21 ਸਾਲ ਹੋ ਗਏ 22 ਸਾਲ ਹੋ ਗਏ ਹਨਾ ਮੈਨੂੰ 27 ਸਾਲ ਹੋ ਗਏ ਆ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦੀ ਨੂੰ ਇੱਥੇ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਨਾਈਸ ਆ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਲੇਡੀਸ ਹੀ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦੀਆਂ ਆ ਡੇ ਤੇ ਨਾਈਟ ਜੀ ਮੈਂ ਆਪਣਾ ਕਿਚਨ ਆਪਣੀਆਂ ਜੋ ਵੀ ਮੇਰੀਆਂ ਭੈਣਾਂ ਹੀ ਕਹਿ ਲੋ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਮੇਰੇ ਨਾਲ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦੀਆਂ ਆ ਮੈਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਪਿਆਰ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਈਦਾ ਜਦੋਂ ਸਵੇਰੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਡੋਰ ਖੋਲੀ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਇਕੱਠੀਆਂ ਹੁੰਨੀਆਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਕੰਮ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਕਰਦੀਆਂ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੂੰ ਇਦਾਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਪੁੱਛਣਾ ਪੈਂਦਾ ਕਿ ਤੂੰ ਕੀ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਨਾ ਸਾਰੇ ਆਪੋ ਆਪਣੇ ਕੰਮ ਤੇ ਲੱਗਦੀਆਂ ਫਿਰ ਅਸੀਂ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਜਦੋਂ ਚਾਹ
Well, thank you both for being here uh, to discuss an amazing conversation. I just want to give a huge thanks to Amarji, you know, sharing her story and, uh, you know, making the beautiful jaw and uh, then seeing the ingredients kind of happen and unfold. And, and it's just incredible. And so thanks to Miro for allowing us to be in Vidge's restaurant and sharing the space with us. And Cindy, you know, the new exhibition, What If, which will be incredible, uh, hosted by the Surrey Art Gallery, which we, you know, looking forward to have in the space. And so if you can share, you know, uh, some of the themes part of What If and uh, to our audience and, you know, what are some of the important topics that you want to share and our experiences as well. Thanks, Selvi. Um, yeah, so What If is kind of a journey back into my teen years, um, revisiting and reimagining what my life could have been like had I had access to South Asian female role models, which at that time it was pre-internet, so I didn't have the access that people do now. And my family and community didn't really ever openly talk about accomplishments by women. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to bring these women that I've chosen for this exhibition into the space and, you know, talk about their accomplishments and, you know, what kind of pioneers and trailblazers and rebels and vigilantes they were and are. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Well, I know just for myself that never, that never existed for myself, mm -hmm. seeing, you know, uh, people South Asian being represented in my community people to look up to. Uh, so I think it'll be an amazing experience for, especially for the youth and, and our culture as well, and, mm -hmm. the, and the young women to kind of experience that. And I don't know, Mir, did you ever, what was your kind of upbringing? I know that, you know, born and raised in India and then moved to DC. Were there South Asian women that you looked up to or, you know? Yeah, so I was, um, I started kindergarten in the US. And so my mom, dad and I moved in 1969 in the winter and we were very much alone. We were like a one nuclear family. My sister was born uh, very soon. And um, there was black America and there was white America because this is 1969, mm -hmm. there was wow. desegregation. Mm -hmm. And mom and dad had to make a choice. And since wow. they're immigrants mm -hmm. coming for economic reasons, mm -hmm. you know what, the, the, the cynical answer or solution was that we moved into an all white community. So. Uh, I was the only Indian person mm -hmm. uh, until I would say, oh my goodness, all through elementary school and all through high school. Wow. And believe it or not, um, I also made that choice because mm -hmm. I lived in an mm -hmm. all white neighborhood mm -hmm. and I know for survival that that was it. Okay, this is where I live. Um, then we moved from Maryland to Virginia mm -hmm. and then I was the only non-white person. Wow. Wow. all through high school and that's yeah that's incredible I mean I think we all share a similar story of being uh growing up in a very kind of white dominant schools I know Cindy yeah. you grew up in Kelowna myself yeah. in Abbotsford and so uh, these kind of personal stories that you know shape your identity mm -hmm. in so many different ways so I just I really enjoy this kind of the what if you know what mm -hmm. if my personal journey had shifted mm -hmm. if, it, if you know what if there were more of me and and Mir, you do you share quite a bit about the um, you know the woman in the back and the labor and the unseen woman and you know it's just it's quite in parallel unique to see and so I know when I grew up it was uh, I was sharing a similar story earlier you know I had my gut which was my braid and and uh, in grade seven I had chopped it off and so it, and all of a sudden I was prayed by my teacher saying oh look how much more pretty she is and yeah. it just yeah. like this whole sense of the, the cutting the hair, the mm. this you know, everyday ritual that was for me, and then being this kind of only brown girl in in my school, but born and raised in Canada, like Canadian, and it, you know difficult topics and difficult themes that you know being are yeah. shared. So, and you kind of feel like you know what's wrong with me, mm -hmm. you know, being a brown person in a non-brown community. Yeah, and. I know, like, not for me personally, but I know some other South Asian uh, women who, when they were younger, would draw self-portrait. They would draw themselves with blonde hair, blue eyes, and white skin. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so when you don't, you don't see yourself in in your world. Mm -hmm. You know, you come to start thinking that like there must be something wrong with me. Like my skin's too dark, my mm -hmm. hair's too dark, my name is weird. You know, and then you start aligning yourself with the culture that is dominant and that is, you know, sort of um, getting the recognition that you want, but yeah. aren't getting. Yeah, absolutely. 
-hmm. And so, yeah, maybe that goes to my first question. Um, you know, you both have made such an enormous mark here in BC and beyond and share stories through, you know, your art forms as South Asian women. So I'm wondering, you know, what made you want to be in this particular work? And then within that, can you tell us in what ways does your cultural heritage, uh, sense of identity, gendered experiences and family influence your, your work today, you know, as a chef and, you know, artist of best beads and then visual artists? Did you want to? <laughs> sure, I'll go, um, I'll go first. Um, so this is not my planned career. Mm -hmm. So up until the age of 30, I've got my master's degree in economics mm -hmm. and I was just committed to human rights and international development work. Um, mom and dad are partition Indians, uh, Hindus who then migrated from Lahore to Delhi in 1947. Dad was 10, mom was eight, and that was a big part of my background. Dad lost his entire family. He became an orphan. His brother was killed mm -hmm. in the refugee camp. So that I grew up with mm -hmm. that background. Um, so for me, it was very important. The world was really important to me. And um, I moved to Vancouver, I got married, I was 30, I didn't even know Canada. I could tell you the capital of just about every other country in the right. world and the population and their economy. Right. And if you asked me about Canada, and all I could remember was didn't Mick Jagger's um, sleep with the Canadian Prime Minister's wife or something? Like that was my story of Canada. But yeah. I moved to Vancouver. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and uh, but yeah, I fell in love with just the little mm -hmm. baby restaurant Vikram had mm -hmm. just opened three right? months ago. Yeah. And I fell in love with Amarjeet. It was mm -hmm. really that she and I just, we just fell for each other. And, and at the age of 30, the culture that, um, I never rejected anything. Mm. I think for me, it's not that I rejected anything. Growing up, like I said, I grew up in an all white neighborhood. At some point I, I was, I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, I didn't have a voice. Mm -hmm. I was so busy, mm -hmm. right? Just making sure that I fit in. I didn't have a voice. And that, but at home, I grew up with parents who were louder than my parents were the focus of the house, right. not me and right. my sister. Yeah. And I grew up with these really weirdly <laughs> confident parents that they thought they were the most beautiful people on the planet. That's amazing. Oh, right? I they peacocked that. themselves. It's Mom and dad just thought, you know what, we are just so gorgeous. Amazing. These Americans are just not attractive compared to Shaker and Omi. And we're like, okay. <laughs> and, um, but you know, it rubs off on you. It so does. And, sure. um, so my nickname, grade eight, mm. my nickname was Idi Amin Dalwala. In school. Idi Amin Dalwala. That was it because I was the only <laughs> non-white, uh, or, and uh, oh. like it was, but, but, but I didn't get mad. I yeah. just felt um, like, but wow, you all don't know me. Yeah. Like for me, it's like, but if yeah. you only got to know me, mm. like, yeah. wow, it's your loss. And in a way, that's what mom and dad always said. Oh, it's their loss. Don't worry about it. It's their mm -hmm. loss. And I somehow grew yeah. to thinking, did you just call me ugly? God, but you just don't know no. me. Mm -hmm. And um, wow. that always stuck inside my mind mm -hmm. because at home, I was celebrated. Yeah. We were really celebrated at home, all right? And uh, even though the unibrow was there, <laughs> right? And I wasn't allowed. Well. Because you know what, you know, again, your mom and dad, yeah. well, if you, you know, if you wax your mm -hmm. eyebrows, you might kiss a boy. <laughs> okay, well, we couldn't have that in grade nine. Long hair, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, well, yeah. if you cut your hair, yeah. Uh, boy, yeah. Yeah. everything yeah. was yeah. related to keeping me away from boys. And I was like, I wish, <laughs> no, I really wish, but, um, but going back to Amarjeet and going back to my, mm. um, you know, work at Vidges, I just, for me, it's how I feel about my kitchen staff, mm. right? If the world, if all of Canada could just see inside mm. who mm -hmm. we are, yeah. right? And so then I did turn into the woman peacock of mm -hmm. the Vidges yeah. kitchen, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, everybody, <laughs> debutante <Amazing>. ball, <laughs> finally here, right? Um, but. The, uh, us, not the women, the yeah. we mm -hmm. women. I wish for everybody to just see how strong, Absolutely. how funny, how yeah. fierce, um, just how 
we've grown to be progressive with one mm-hmm. another and the sharing inside this kitchen. And community. And yeah. the community, and that's what drives me career-wise with the cooking as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to do it on my own. If you see what I cook at home, you would be shocked. <laughs> yeah. But in the Vidya's kitchen, mm, yeah. something happens to me. Mm. I enter this kitchen and there's Amarjeet and Sital and Ravinder yeah. and Jaya. And it's like a synergy. Something yes. just happens. Yeah. And that's where I just feel. Um, and it's through the food. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's through the food that I experience the pride I have in mm-hmm. being Indian. Well, the pride mm-hmm. I have in the women in the kitchen. The pride I have in my mom. Mm. right and everything she did so it's it's personal for me absolutely i know that you know going into the kitchen and meeting all these incredible women how much stories they share with each other you know it's like this sisterhood the fanny you know that they come together and they get to share this their doll and roti together their jaw together and just talk about the struggles that they're going through and it's it's something we need to see more of yeah but you've, you've created a space that feels sacred I think or feels very safe for the women to just be themselves and talk about things that are important to them that they may not be able to do anywhere else mm. yeah. Mm. Like, yeah 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 um, Amarjeet and I did yeah right I mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. want to be clear that I would never have been able to do it without oh, Amarjeet right next to me so Amazing. I understand Punjabi fluently mm-hmm. but I speak Hindi and I speak Hindi fluently but with an American accent mm-hmm. Amarjeet he understands my Hindi. So we are like this, but she speaks in Punjabi and I speak Speaking in Hindi. Hindi. <laughs> so, yeah. Incredible. And for yours, Cindy, you know, mm-hmm. with your artworks and your yeah. st- storytelling, and especially through your murals and, and this kind of, you know, act- Activision yeah. uh, work through uh, South Asian women who've been, you know, murdered mm-hmm. in BC and mostly in Vancouver. What, you know, what is, what is like the audience, what do you want the audience to kind of know about that through, through your artworks and through your forms? Yeah, I mean, I just like, I feel like I didn't grow up around women that were, that didn't show their strength necessarily. Mm-hmm. So I just felt like women felt really subservient to me in South Asian culture and I just didn't want to be a part of that. Mm-hmm. And so I think with, you know, the stories that I share about about South Asian women, I just I want the world to see the strength and resilience mm. that South Asian women embody, mm-hmm. you know, and also the women who are no longer here with us to like honor and celebrate their legacies. Yeah, absolutely. You know? yeah. yeah, you do that really well. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping that people can experience that in, in the show yeah. as well. Um, and then, you know, how have the milestones in your, in your life shifted your own position, you know, your, your own sense of self uh, and how you create your recipes and visual art to the consumer? Yeah, I think, well, for me, I have been wanting to do art my entire life, but it just, it wasn't an option. And it was that, you know, be a doctor. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah. I was like, right? And I was like, I don't want to be a doctor. But my mom's like, just write the MCAT. And I'm like, well, it's a waste of my time and your money. So, mm-hmm. but I did do a biology degree. and. You know, I was an honor student my whole school career, and then I hit college, and I just, I hated it. Like, mm-hmm. I hated studying something I wasn't interested in. And so I just felt really dissatisfied. And I feel from that point until I had my son at 40, I was just kind of aimless. Like, I didn't mm-hmm. really know what I was doing, because I, I knew I wanted to do the art, but I just, I didn't know how to do it. Right. And for me, I think timing is everything. and. In 2016, everything just kind of aligned Mm -hmm. for me to finally leave my job Mm -hmm. and start something new and do this art thing and like really do it. And so for the past five years, I've just put everything I have into this career and it's manifested in ways I couldn't have ever imagined, you know. And so I feel like I'm finally living my life's Mm -hmm. purpose, which I hadn't been, you know, and I, I just feel so thankful every day that I get to do what I love and my son gets to see it so you know Mm -hmm. that was part of the reason I wanted to make the shift because how could I tell him to like dream big or like go after your dreams or do something unconventional Mm -hmm. if I'm too scared to do it myself yeah you know and so now he gets to see mom doing all of these like weird things like painting on walls and like sewing (laughs) things together never weird um, (laughs) you know but it's just so second nature to him and so I hope like from that he sees that you know he can do anything he wants as long as he just has you know the discipline and the vision and you know we're here to back him mm-hmm. yeah. and Mira what about for you you know a milestone for you that uh, kind of shaped yourself into the career that you have now 
So I'm going to separate it between mm-hmm. that shaped myself mm-hmm. and then that shaped the career that I have now. Um, myself, so when I was um, just about 18, and I wanted to go away for university. I wanted freedom to be me. Mm-hmm. And I was really all through elementary school and high school. I had learned at some point in America that at 18, you are deemed an adult, mm-hmm. right? And you can move yeah. away from home. Right. And so uh, I wanted to move away for university. And um, so my dad drove me to uh, Virginia Tech. And that was mm-hmm. about a five hour drive from where we lived. And um, mom and dad, uh, like I, you know, they loved each other but it was a very tumultuous relationship. It was a very violent relationship. And um, uh, growing up, it was a really bizarre thing for me. And I'm sharing something really personal now. Mm -hmm. And I hope everybody listens to this carefully. Dad beat mom. Mm -hmm. My dad beat mom sometimes 2 a.m. It's ingrained in me, dad beat mom. Mom was never afraid of dad. Mom was never afraid to Mm -hmm. speak her voice she never backed off. She just just was never afraid. She goes, well, I'm still going to get what I want. Well, right? Whether right. I get bruised or not, I'm not backing off. I'm going to get whatever I want. And so um, I needed to get out of that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so all these different complicated layers of growing up in America, yeah, right? Yeah, and um, so you were driving to university, and my father says to me in a nutshell with his thick accent, but um, he says, um, I have some advice for you. And I'm thinking, oh, God, the doctor, yeah, on, lawyer. You know, oh God, yeah. the doctor, lawyer, engineer advice again. And he goes, no, 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 no. This is very different. Just, just listen to me and pull the car over. And I pulled the car over and I'm cringing. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know. He's going to tell me, like, don't have sex. Right. I'm just sitting there. Like, oh, God, what's going to be? And, uh, and so he you know, pulled over and, you know, his eyes watered and he just, he goes, promise me something. And I said, what? And he goes, you will never, ever let a man treat you even remotely the way I treated your mother. Mm. And that just set me in place. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, it was that combination of him acknowledging what he did, but in a way he was acknowledging that um, we're stopping this, Yeah. Yeah. right? We are stopping this and with you, we are stopping and I really took it to heart. And it wasn't just a man or a woman for me. Mm-hmm. Nobody yeah. was going to treat me. Mm-hmm. I just realized, um, like, nope, I don't need to do it. I don't oh. need to flail and wail. Yeah. yeah. But the, how I'm going to be, this is not my space. And mm-hmm. I get to control my mm-hmm. space. Um, yeah. So that was myself. That's right. Once yeah. I became myself independently. Yeah. Um, and this is also something that I bring into the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. With my Absolutely. With the yeah. staff. It's like, yeah. all right, everybody. You know, no one gets to, you know what I mean? Like we pay it forward, mm-hmm. right? We just pay it forward. Mm-hmm. Um, the next milestone really was um, Vidges fell into my lap, right? Mm-hmm. Meeting Vikram, mm-hmm. the fact that he had just opened this little tiny restaurant, mm-hmm. it fell into my lap. It never occurred to me that I would ever be doing this. And mm-hmm. I remember telling my dad that I met Vikram and, and my father looks at me and he goes, um, a waiter? Yeah. <laughs> like, like you're, you're going to marry a waiter? And I was like, no, he owns his own restaurant. He's yeah. a businessman. Right, yeah. you know. Entrepreneur. He's, he's exactly. a businessman, you know, and he goes, but he's a waiter. And I got all like, oh, no, no. Um, but uh, it's Vikram and I, it was the teamwork between mm-hmm. husband and wife. Yeah. Right. Um, between. T- and so when I talk about women's rights, when I talk about any gender's mm-hmm. rights, yeah. I don't want to say that men are not a part of these rights, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And so right. it was what a team did mm. and then what the team created. Right. And now it's 27 years later and we each have our own voice, right? Yeah. Um, we have our own independent yeah. voices, but women at Vidges have just been such a strong, um, we run it, yeah. Yeah. we were mm-hmm. running the restaurant, the, Flair, everything yeah. about Vidges mm-hmm. um, is very, very, um, it's us. And so um, that was the second milestone, yeah. really. Wow. was uh, the traditional milestone. Yeah. I got married. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you, like, um, shaped it differently, though. I love the kind mm-hmm. of the shaping of the self is will be completely different how I shape my career and how the two, you know, still are, you know, c- concurrent together, but then the milestones kind of meet. They have to meet, Mm -hmm. just the way how all human beings have to meet. Everybody has to have power sharing, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, Everybody, you know, you have a son. I have two daughters. Mm -hmm. Um, We can't 
Yeah. We can't give the hand to anybody. Yeah. 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 And so I think my second milestone of, you know, mm-hmm. teaming up right with a man and realizing like yes as a woman i can actually team up mm-hmm. with a man mm-hmm. and be myself and be 50 50. absolutely yep. that was a big milestone for mm-hmm. me it hasn't been easy no doubt <laughs> but, it's, yeah. but it's like what you like your personal milestone you know you brought that that feeling and that energy into the kitchen so mm-hmm. you know that it just kind of flowed into your career milestone you oh, know, right. Uh, I think I, I was telling somebody this earlier. I think early on, we were very new to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So me and Amarjeet, and then Sandeep came, and then Binder came, and yeah. we're all very new to each other. Mm-hmm. And um, so we had a lot of frank conversations about our various cultural backgrounds and everything. Wow. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, we talked a lot about sex, mm-hmm. like, you know. Such a taboo topic. Such a taboo topic, right. but you yeah. know, you talk about it in safety. Yeah. But then the other time, um, I remember early on, I said, okay, who is picking up their husband's socks and dirty underwear mm-hmm. <laughs> and shoes? <laughs> and they're all, all right. And it's like, okay, we are going to now give ourselves three months, yep. right? Okay. You, if you're working, not even that you're working, yep. you're, you are three months to stop mm-hmm. picking up mm-hmm. your husband's socks underwear and shoes wow and it turned but it was funny yeah yeah it wasn't this um uh you know miru sitting on a throne yeah, yeah, saying yeah, yeah. here i as an emancipated woman yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna tell you how to oh, leave your do? culture and, <laughs> right but it was really it was really funny and we were keeping tabs right. i'm sure their husbands loved you right but yeah right <laughs> okay, it was like, okay so yeah. okay i did it okay i did it okay i did it okay i did it and then um i came home one night and it's like wow they all did it and Vikram's socks <laughs> and shoes are right there on the floor uh, right? and is, I came yeah, yeah wow. I came home the telling. next morning I said guess what <laughs> I'm so telling for like shared experiences totally. and you just it's kind of this unknown or not unknown but like this known that it's just, it's part of our culture yeah. You know, it's it's so it's always it's been so it's such your a shift thing. Yeah. yeah, totally. That's yeah. when you were talking Absolutely. about yeah. right? just the whole subservient, yeah. subservient yeah. thing. Yeah, what's your mom's doing? But you're you're teaching like you all are teaching each other, you know, how to navigate boundaries mm-hmm. and how to set because like we don't have boundaries in South Asian culture. Like mm-hmm. I, I like I feel like I have no boundaries when it comes to my family. Right. You know what I mean? And so to teach each other boundaries and how to like support each other through setting up those boundaries. It's yeah. pretty incredible. It's a, it's a very unique energy, yeah. that's for sure here. That kind of goes into my next question, which is you know, quite unique and lovely. And so, you know, I recognize that the trailblazing women um, are part of your everyday practice. And so women who have not been seen or heard, uh, Mira, you talk about the South Asian women in your kitchen who create these amazing masterpieces, uh, incredible food. And Sandeep, you know, your work reflects historic and present South Asian women. You know, the vigilantes, the activists, the mm-hmm. storytellers, you know, who have trailblazed in so many ways mm-hmm. and, and who you are both uh, also trailblazing for us, for the mm-hmm. next generation. And so if you can share with us today, you know, can you tell us, you know, how this is influences you every day? Okay. Yeah, I guess for me, like I, I think about, you know, I grew up in Canada to a relatively sane family. Um, I've had access to education. I've wanted for nothing. Um, and still I find like certain things have been such obstacles for me. And then I think about these women in India that are in my show and like everything was stacked against them, Mm. you know, from like being oppressed in so many different ways and violent ways, you know, not having access to education, not having access to, you know, having a voice. It's like, how did they persevere? Right. Like, how did they just keep moving through all of this when, you know, I'm sitting here with all of this fear mm. about moving forward. And, you know, I, I finally have done that, but it's taken me a long time to do it. And so I just have so much admiration for these women that just persist, mm-hmm. even though, you know, they're potentially, their lives are in danger because of it, but they just keep persisting and just keep doing the thing. And yeah, I just- absolutely. Can you share one of the hardcore women and, and their story? Um, yeah, I a personal favorite of mine is Selfie. And so um, there's a Canadian filmmaker who did a documentary called Driving with Selfie. And so she's from um, south of India and she was a child bride, married to an older man who was very abusive and um, basically pimped her out to other men and his friends. And 
she ended up having a daughter with him and she tried to leave, but her family was like, no, you're married now, you have to stay with him. And she was just in like such a state of despair that she walked to a bus stop and she was just gonna walk in front of a bus and just end it. Mm -hmm. But as the bus came up, she decided to just get on the bus. And so that split second decision changed her life forever. She went and got her daughter and she left. Mm -hmm. And then with the support of this organization, um, she was able to have access to education. They gave her money to help support her. She became like South India's first female taxi driver. Mm -hmm. And then I think by now she has a fleet of taxis mm -hmm. and now she's a truck driver. And I think she has a fleet of trucks as well. And so she went from this like awful, horrible marriage, terrible experience on the brink of, you know, suicide. And then in that split second, she decided that she wanted to exactly. live. And then she's created this really, carved out this really like interesting, non-conforming life for herself. Mm -hmm. And the documentary I think was done over a span of a decade. And so you're seeing like little baby Selvi growing up right. in this documentary to the person she is now. And I just think, how, like, how did you do that? Like, how did mm -hmm. you have that resilience? You had nobody on your side. Mm -hmm. You had nobody there to support you. Your family wasn't supporting you, but you did it. Yeah. And you, you know, you walked through it and you worked through it. And I just, I marvel at that. It's incredible to see how many women, I think there's 16 in the show. 13. 13. 13 yeah. Hardcore women and uh, K-A-U-R. Yeah. Uh, and so it's incredible to see these these stories. And some yeah. I have never even heard of. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's inspiring and, and they're hard stories to, to think through, to sit yeah. through. But um, it's incredible. And that's such a beautiful, yeah, Selby's, yeah, she's there. She's amazing. <laughs> she, yeah. I don't know, she has, and the best part about her is she just has this beautiful smile mm -hmm. and she's just smiling through it all mm -hmm. all the horrible things that have happened to her she just has this yeah. just beautiful mm -hmm. stunning smile and you just fall in love with her absolutely yeah. and that kind of that shows mm -hmm. i think mira with them um, the women that are you know working working uh in the back you know from their stories and how they trailblaze through all these hardships and yeah um i love that you're focusing on quite dramatic stories. Mm, some of them, yeah, right? definitely. Like pretty dramatic. Again, yeah. you know, I've had access to just about everything. I mean, yeah. um, you know, access to education, access to anything, food, mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. I've never had to worry about shelter, mm -hmm. getting schooling, getting yeah. supplies, anything like that. Doesn't mean that, you know, life isn't hard. Um, I think what's important to me is a quote, I'm, I, I'm not comfortable with the title trailblazer, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but at the same time, I'm very intellectually aware that I'm seen as one, so I'm going to own it. Yeah, um, 100%. For me, it's really important that we women are all one. Yes. That's super important yes. to me. It doesn't matter if you are a white woman Absolutely. in Canada or if you are mm -hmm. a black Nigerian woman mm -hmm. or a woman in India. We women are all one. And yeah. we women cry the same tears. Mm -hmm. We do the same yeah. laugh. We love mm -hmm. our children. If we don't have children, then we talk about, I mean, we talk and it's really important for me when I get out there that I'm welcoming everybody to me mm -hmm. and welcoming myself to them. Yeah. And I've got two daughters and uh, I think that personally just drives me to, uh, it just focuses, it just, I keep that focus that I want to create the world mm -hmm. in which when I go, mm -hmm. I can say, my girls are good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Right. And not just my girls. Yeah, right. The world over. It's, I see that as like a, when you're saying the welcoming, you know, mm -hmm. both sides, this kind of um, invitation for a reciprocal kind of welcoming. Yeah. Um, one more thing yeah. I want to add in terms of about how we are all one, mm -hmm. right? Um, in the Vidge's kitchen, we have really awesome discussions that most likely would not even be allowed mm -hmm. outside now. You'd get, mm -hmm. you know, um, silenced or shamed yep. for it. We talk openly about racism. Mm -hmm. We talk openly about, um, well, why don't you like? Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm gonna say it like, well, wait a minute, I don't get it. So why are you so against your daughter marrying a Chinese person? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about, well, this and that. And it's like, well, we really, we talk it. It's, it's almost great. like you yeah. get it out, right? Yeah. yeah. And then at the end, what ends up happening is the more conversations we have and we get out mm -hmm. these preconceived mm -hmm. racist yeah. ideas totally. and thoughts, we realize, well, that was really dumb. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. You're right. It's okay if my daughter mm -hmm. marries a Muslim. Mm -hmm. um, it, or if my son marries a white lady. It, you know totally. what I mean? And it's sort of like what we've actually accomplished. 
through the safety of being mm -hmm. together yeah, and ourselves. Um, and that's what's yeah. really trailblazing. Mm -hmm. Safety yeah. is the, the, the safe, key word. The safe dialogue, the Absolutely. safe place to yeah. bring your culture. Yeah. And really that's what mm -hmm. um, we want, mm -hmm. right? Is a safety anchor for dialogue. Absolutely. And with that, yeah. um, I can I also love saying that the kitchen, we just, we've shed mm -hmm. ourselves yeah. of any prejudices mm -hmm. and racisms. And again, it's a, it's a welcoming place. Yeah. Yeah, and you don't want to like live in an echo chamber where everyone thinks the exact same things as you, right? That's when you have the rich conversations is when people have differing opinions and oh, you're absolutely. working through them and you're talking through them. I remember yeah. when we, had to, I, we were talking like, what is the Punjabi word for lesbian? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the Punjabi word for gay man? And we were mm -hmm. talking about this maybe 15 years yeah. ago, right? They brought it to yeah. me. Yeah, They brought it to me, All right? So what is there, there is no word, is there? Mm, no. Yeah, right, I, I said, what, think is this, this, so, is what is this word, gay? Yeah. <laughs> right. right. And I said, like, well, it's, you know, like, no, 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 we know that. Yeah. Like, yeah. We know that yeah. part, but can we just have a conversation yeah, yeah. about it? And I was like, it's, it's, um, and then you, and you find her, and I said, well, what do you think about it if mm. you're son? And yeah. it was just these are That's the conversations amazing. that yeah. happen. It's incredible. They're the, they're the conversations that need to, that need need to, to happen. They need to happen, but they yes. don't happen, they don't happen enough. Yes, yes. exactly. Yes. And yeah. especially in these, you know, safety kind of measures that we talk about, you yeah. know, if there's, if there's you know, the welcoming, the safety around mm -hmm. it, the, you know, how many more stories are there to be shared still? Yeah, and I just so, I think of how many stories are just stuck in women's yeah. throats mm -hmm. that are they're just waiting to share, but they haven't felt safe enough mm -hmm. to share. So like, yeah. what you've Absolutely. created, but is, we've got to create the safety. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Well, and it, sure. you know, and you both have uh, trailblazed. You know, women that we're we're all one. I just think that you two are incredible. So I think just want to say a, a true thank you mm -hmm. for you know have sharing the space with me and and my own safety and my own kind of storytelling as well that I continue to do and Sandeep for yours and Mir for yours as well. And so thank you and uh, a lovely conversation and Thanks. to have thank share Amarjeet's story. Yeah. It was absolutely beautiful and to have this tea and jaw with you all. So really do appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Sylvia. Yeah. <laughs>